One theme we've learned from earnings thus far, companies are flexing their pricing power and consumers are willing to pay the price. Here's Hugh Johnston, Pepsi uh, CFO, earlier on Yahoo Finance. You may not be able to go out and get a new car. You may not be able to go out and get a, a really fancy piece of technology, but you can afford a bag of Doritos or you can afford a Gatorade Zero after you work out or you can afford an energy energy drink in the morning. So I, we we tend to do pretty well through through times when the consumer is more stressed on a macro basis because we are a, a simple treat in your life that that makes you happy. So no, I'm not terribly surprised by it. Great, now I'm hungry. But the question remains, when will the consumer push back and slow their spending? Joining us now, John Lear, Morning Consult Chief Economist. John, good to see you. I know you like a good Gatorade Zero after a workout. <laughs> what have you learned so far from the consumer? Are we starting to show some hesitancy, a little bit of pullback, or none as you see it? No, we are in a, in a pretty serious way. And I think it's important to note that the earnings that were hearing now reflect um, you know, the first quarter, which are really you know, two thirds of which happened January and February. I think the consumer in March was very, very weak relative to earlier in the month. In particular, we're seeing that the consumer has said that they're more price sensitive, that when they go out to the grocery store, they go to buy a used car, they're more likely to pull back and say the price is too much for me to be able to afford right now. And that's a reflection, I think, of weaker um, household finances. It's a reflection of ongoing uncertainty around the jobs market, particularly for higher income folks. And so I don't think that the, you know, the second quarter will be nearly as rosy as the first. So, John, when we talk about maybe how bad it could potentially get, because we also heard from McDonald's CEO who said that they are, quote, proud of our system right now that has executed prices in the light of the double digit inflation that we have been experiencing. But we are seeing more resistance than we saw at the outset. Very true to what you were just saying. How big of a pullback do you think we could potentially see as we try to gauge how this is all going to play out? Well, I think businesses and firms are on a particularly challenging spot right now because they're trying to figure out, you know, how can they maintain their profit margins uh, in the face of elevated input cost? And so they're not looking right now to set prices just based on current costs, but actually future expected costs. And I think they all know that those input costs are going to continue to rise. I think their ability to pass those costs on to consumers will become more and more difficult over the course of the second quarter. I would expect profit margins to sort of narrow, particularly on the consumer facing uh, companies. It's something we've seen uh, over and over again that small businesses, when we go survey small business, they continue to say that inflation is their major challenge because um, they don't know exactly how input costs are gonna change relative to what they can charge customers. And that difference between the two, that's, what, that's how they make their money. That's their profit margin. I expect those profit margins to erode going forward. Interesting you say that, John, because yes, almost every CEO, CFO on their earnings call is describing inflation as a headwind, but it's not entirely clear because that inflation is the reason they are still eking out profits. You're seeing sales volume declines in most of these companies. Inflation is the sole reason they are hitting their mark. So it is actually, is it a tailwind? Well, in the initial phase of inflation, which again, I think we're kind of still in that initial phase, it's been about a year of having really elevated levels of inflation, um, companies can make out pretty well because consumers started this position with fairly strong wallets. We still had all that pandemic savings that consumers and, and businesses had for that matter. And so they companies were able to go out and charge a lot more. They were able to pass through all of the, the elevated uh, input costs that they faced to the end user, that pass through will become more and more challenging over time. Raising prices becomes more difficult uh, uh, over time. And, and so again, I don't think that the future is gonna look like the present. I think really we're in sort of a Goldilocks period for um, businesses being able to benefit from inflation. Going forward, consumers will be more stressed. And John, with that, uh, taking that into account, we also did hear from UPS's CEO on their uh, in, in the, uh, statement right here saying that in the first quarter, deceleration in U.S. retail sales resulted in lower volume than we anticipated, challenging macro conditions and changes in consumer behavior. When you take into account the end of the year, what do you think inflation is going to look like in the companies that are best positioned in this type of environment? 
We continue to see inflation through um, through the end of March and really through the end of April as being fairly persistent, particularly that core services inflation, which I think gives you the best read uh, of, of where inflation is headed after stripping out some of the more volatile categories. I think it's going to take a few months of persistently weak demand uh, to get inflation down. I mean, what that means to translate that, it means that spending is going to be lower, that business investment needs to fall a little bit. And that's that's um, that's going to lead to, I think, some pain on, for the economy. And, and as a result, I think you're likely to see businesses, in fact, reduce some of their hiring plans as well when it becomes more and more clear that that, that demand is just not there the same way it was this time last year. So I think inflation is headed down, but it's going to be a, a relatively painful process to, to get it back to where the Fed wants it to be. So we talked Pepsi, we talked McDonald's, we talked UPS. John, what industries and therefore a few companies perhaps do ultimately have pricing power in this environment as we shift to, I, I assume you're going to go towards travel, um, but what environment are, are consumers just showing demand no matter what the prices are? Travel was extremely resilient towards the latter half of 2022. I do think heading into 2023, particularly for higher income adults, we started to see travel spending become a little bit more constrained as um, you know those elevated gas prices become more and more difficult to pass on through to consumers. I think um, you know the area to look is likely these businesses. This is more of sort of a microeconomic perspective. It's the areas that have fairly limited competition and they're they're able to pass on all of their input cost onto their in buyer without having to worry about uh, competition eroding their profit margins. Those tend to be larger industrials. Um, on the retail front, those, those companies are, tend to operate in pretty competitive environments. So I think that's why they're, they're going to be squeezed as the consumer struggles a little bit towards the latter half of this year. Yeah, JetBlue uh, posting a loss this morning, but projecting uh, profit in their guidance. John Lear, Morning Consult, Chief Economist. Appreciate the time, sir. Thank you.